There's a new church on the horizon made of light, not of stone, calling out to our creation. You are not alone. Lions and lambs, saints and sinners, best of friends. Sacramento CSL, and welcome to our Sacred Sunday service. If you're new to us today, I'm Ruth Hall, President of the Board of Trustees and Production Manager for our virtual programs. We're glad you're here. This service will be recorded and used on social media. We post on our webpage, on Facebook, and we have a presence on Instagram and Meetup. Check us out at www.saccsl.org and sign up to receive emails so you can keep track of what's going on. We have some exciting things to share with you. If you haven't already heard, we're coming home. We're gonna be reopening our center with a house blessing at 10 o'clock on August 1st, and our service will start at 10.30. We're calling this a soft opening because we're gonna take our time and open slowly with just a few chairs and a few tables and our sound system. We're gonna be doing some live streaming on YouTube 
and we're going to continue our presence on our Zoom room so that those who can't be with us in person can still attend our Sunday service. So we have a lot of work to do to get ready for that August 1st date. And we're looking for some volunteers. If you have some time on Friday, July 2nd, beginning at 7.30, we're going to be loading up from our uh, storage unit, a few chairs and tables and our sound system. And then we're gonna unload at our main avenue location after that. So if you're interested in coming and helping, you can either come and help at the loading or unloading or both if you'd like. You can text me at this number here that's on the screen and let me know that you're interested in helping and I'll give you the details as to where to show up, what time we're gonna be there, and you can certainly help us. We'd love to have a few extra hands, not a lot of heavy lifting. We'll do the chairs one at a time and the tables should be easy too. So just sign up and let us know you're ready to help. And now I'd like to introduce our practitioner of the day, Linda Connolly, who will start us off with our land acknowledgement. Linda? Thank you, Ruth. Um, so we want to start out with the land acknowledgement of the indigenous people who have lived here long before anyone else. They're actually the original inhabitants of uh, the land that we now live on. So we acknowledge the indigenous peoples of this land who have lived here since time immemorial. Sacramento is the ancestral tribal land of the Nisanon people. We also honor the Southern Maidu people to the north, the Valley and Plains Miwok people to the south of the American River, and the Patwin Wintum people to the west of the Sacramento River. Now, please welcome everyone and let's unmute and greet each other. Hello. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome, Mitch. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, hey, Stella. Good to see you all. Oh my gosh, look at those smiles. Wow. I'm just basking in this. That's a no, I'm yeah. okay. Let's just breathe in, let's breathe in in this oneness, this oneness that is everywhere present for where it is we are and where we are it is. It is this oneness that has brought us together today to gather in this sacred gathering where we can connect and see the reflections of ourselves in each other as we connect to the divine that is in all creation. And I am so thankful and excited for the divine message that is going to be provided by Mitch Austin today. I am so thankful for Ruth Hall, our production manager who brings us all together and makes this possible. And I am eternally grateful for the practitioners and all those that contribute to in and behind the scenes to make all this happen. I am also eternally grateful for each and every one of us here today. And so it is. And now for our readings. People consider their problems to come from outside conditions. They try in vain to change the world surrounding them and hope things will improve. This seldom works because their thoughts are out of alignment. It was the French-born novelist Anais Nin who said, you do not see the world as it is, you see it as you are. What you hold in mind it comes to life irrespective of your preferences. Life is a mirror. Its reflection shines your image back to you. Tom Falkery. The purpose of life seems to be 
to acquaint a man with himself and whatever science or art or course of action he engages in reacts upon and illuminates the recesses of his own mind. Thus friends seem to be only mirrors to draw out and explain to us ourselves. And that which draws us near our fellow man is that the deep heart in one answers the deep heart in another. That we find we have a common nature, one life which runs through all individuals and which is indeed divine. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Hmm. Self-knowledge involves relationship. To know oneself is to study oneself in action with another person. Relationship is a process of self-evaluation and self-revelation. Relationship is the mirror in which you discover yourself. To be is to be related. Bruce Lee. And now please stay for our guided meditation and our music.
as I allow the music to lead me into a space of contemplation. If I met you on the corner, would I know you as you are? Would I take you for a stranger and brush past you in the door? And if you called me, would I hear you? Would I walk away too soon? If I linger for a moment, would I see myself in you?
Wow, beautiful. Ah, thank you. And now it is my honor and great pleasure to introduce Mitch Austin, who is a licensed religious science practitioner and ministerial intern in the Holmes Institute. He speaks at spiritual centers regularly and is well known for teaming your inner critic workshop. Mitch has been a spiritual seeker for over 15 years and is passionate about metaphysics and helping people live their best life. So let's open our hearts and our minds and welcome Mitch. Hello, hello. Hi, Linda, thank you for that introduction. And what a sweet service. I've never witnessed your online service and this is just so sweet. You might've saw me grab my phone. I was trying to find out the song. Anybody ever do that? I'm like, what song is this? I need it in my life. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful to be back. I'm so grateful Reverend Sharon invited me to come be with you again. Who was with uh, in one of the first talks I did here? Who, who's heard me before? Oh, good, good. Good, so you know what to expect. <laughs> and the rest of you don't, so we'll see how that goes. We're gonna have a good time. Uh, if you know anything about me, I like to have a good time and uh, to ground our spiritual food into kind of practical stories and things that we can touch base on. And so before we dive deep into our message today, I do wanna just take a moment and acknowledge um, a part of our human family in Miami Beach. Many of you may have heard about the condo disaster. And what I know about our spiritual communities is that when we send our intention of love and healing, it's felt. And so what I would like to do is just invite us to drop into our heart space and send our love. So let's just take a deep breath in and drop into that space of your heart. Maybe put your hand on your heart. And knowing there's no time and space in this energetic field of the divine and that we are all intimately connected. We now send our love on a shaft of light to the people of Miami Beach and to those that are suffering those that are grieving, those that are healing, and those that are helping. Hmm. And I know this love is felt, it is received, and it is powerfully generated in the hearts of those in Miami Beach, from us to them, to the one of us, blessed be. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for doing that with me. So I love New Thought. Who loves New Thought? That's why you're here. We get our spiritual food from everything, right? From the traditions of old, whether it's Buddhists or the Christian faith or uh, Judaism, from the Muslims, right? We get all our spiritual food, wherever it is, wherever it speaks truth. And then we also get our spiritual food from modern day mystics. Any Wayne Dyer fans? He's the one that got me into this mess. Yes. Deepak Chopra, Eckhart Tolle, all modern day mystics. And I consider Bruce Lee a modern day mystic. That's why you got a quote from him today. And so I love that we've been uh, talking about in our, in our sacred readings about the mirror of life and, and that beautiful song, how we mirror each other, because we know that everything is cause and effect and that the cause is a generation of mind, right? It is a done unto us as we believe. And so if it's done unto us as we believe and the world is reacting to our beliefs, our thoughts and our feelings, it's actually out picturing what's in here, yes? Yes. So if we look at what's out there, we can get a good clue about what's in here. So that's why today we're gonna talk about the three spiritual mirrors of perception and how they reflect our reality. Speaking of spiritual food, I got some spiritual food from Facebook the other day I'd like to share with you, which I think is very relevant for today's talk. So I read this little story that's kind of an analogy. It goes like this. 
you're holding a cup of coffee when somebody comes along and bumps into you and shakes your arm and spills coffee everywhere. Now, why did you spill the coffee? Because somebody bumped into me, you would say. Wrong answer. You spilled coffee because that's what was in your cup. If there'd been tea, you would have spilled tea. Whatever's inside our cup spills out. Therefore, when life comes along and shakes us up, whatever's inside will come out. So we have to ask ourselves, what's in our cup? When life gets rough, what spills over out of us? Is it gratitude, forgiveness, peace, humility, prayer? Or is it anger, judgment, bitterness, harsh words, and reactions? Life provides the cup. You choose how to fill it. Amen? Yes. So it may be helpful for us to look at what's been spilling out of our cup and some of these reflections of mind. Because one thing we teach here is law of mind, right? The law of mind, what we put in our mind, in our consciousness, in our collective mind, out pictures. The thoughts, the feelings, the beliefs, they create an energetic field. And it has a shape, it's called a toroidal field. It comes out of your head, goes all the way around and comes up your feet. Who's, who's heard of that shape before? The toroidal field, yes. So it's just like, and science is measuring this now. So the collection of your thoughts, your beliefs, experiences actually create a field. And we know that we're in an energetic universe and a like attracts like. So whatever's swimming around in this circle of fields surrounding you, you're always playing match game two and drawing in. And we know our mind has two parts, a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. And many times we use the iceberg analogy, right? So whatever is above the water, when you see an iceberg, that would be our conscious mind, what we can see and what we know we're thinking and we can kind of retrace our thoughts. And then our subconscious mind, which we can't directly see and is much bigger down below. It's running the show, it's beating our heart. It has every memory, every event, every belief, every judgment, it's all down there. But the two create this field. So it's important to look at our subconscious mind, but sometimes we don't want to. It's kind of like the junk drawer in the house. Anybody have the junk drawer in the house? I went and looked at mine the other day. Yeah, I thought I'm doing this talk. What is my junk drawer? Like I didn't want to, but I opened it up and I had some highlighters I've been looking for. I didn't know they were in there. I had a whole bunch of instructional pamphlets that I never read. Um, I think I'm going to read them, but I never do. Yeah, right? And, and I had some loose screws. I didn't, I didn't analyze that. I didn't analyze that at all. I just left it there. So we need to, uh, if we're gonna be complete in our understanding of what's in our energy field, we need to look at this subconscious mind or shadow mind. And this is what Carl Jung says. Uh, he says, unless you learn to face your own shadows, you will continue to see them in others because the world outside you is only a reflection of the world inside. I love the way he put that. So we're gonna look at our subconscious. Who's ever directly looked at their subconscious mind? Wow, we have a few. It's kind of hard to directly look at it, right? Maybe you did meditation or hypnosis. You kind of have to get to it a different way. You need some assistance. It's kind of like, you ever get something in your eye? And you're going around, hey, can you see this in my eye? And then finally you go to a mirror, right? And you find the thing in your eye because you need something to reflect. You can't look at your own eye, right? And so the subconscious mind is kind of like that. It's not a direct view. We need to look at it from other angles. So this out picturing of our mind, including our subconscious mind, is based on the law of reflection. And here's what Ernest Holmes says. He says, Life is always mirroring to us as conditions, the images of our thinking. This law is impersonal, neutral, receptive, and reactive. Simply put, it just shows us what's there. No judgment. You know what they say, the mirror don't lie. <laughs> Sometimes we wish it would. <laughs> I do. <laughs> 
And what if we could Photoshop the mirror? Wouldn't it be great? I would put more hair, like right up here, right? I'd be Photoshopping my mirror. I'd be, you know, maybe a little less bags here, right? And you get, and you laugh, right? Like that's ridiculous. Why would you Photoshop the mirror? It doesn't change anything. But how many times do we try to change conditions, right? Which is the mirror thinking we've actually fixed something out there. You know, if my boss would just give me a compliment, I would feel good about my work, right? They need to be a certain way so I can feel a certain way. That's, that's trying to fix the mirror. And we've all done it, yes? We're human, we've all done it, right? I'd have more peace if my neighbors wouldn't play rap music. True story, <laughs> I'm still working on that one. <laughs> so today we're gonna look at life as a mirror. And, uh, then, and, and look at how we can see more deeply into it and to give us that assistance we need to see our blind spots. Because I believe we can only know each other through each other, right? I believe we can only know ourselves through each other. Imagine if we were on an island, would you know that you're funny or smart or kind, right? We wouldn't know that unless we're in community. And I remember when I had my first experience of this in my early adulthood, you know, got my professional job and now I was, ooh, I had plans, right? I was ready to go. And I was a coordinator, right, right here. And I was being supervised by a director up here for a city, right? And in between, there's like a supervisor, a manager, right? Director, I'm the coordinator. And I'm in there telling her about my big plans for St. Patrick's Day, where I want to put the craft booths, you know, it's in March, it might rain. So I'm like, I might put them over there. And, she, and then she'd say, well, you might want to consider doing this. And I said, oh, no, 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 I'm going to do that. And then, I, and then I'd say, well, I might put them over here. And then she goes, well, you might want to also think about this. And I go, yeah, but, you know, and I'd always have some type of yeah, but. So finally, she took her pen and she threw it up in the air and leaned back and said, what do I know? I'm only the director. And in that moment, I got a glimpse of myself, a part I wasn't seeing. I wasn't being coachable. I wasn't being receptive. I wasn't opening to higher wisdom and experience than my own. That moment, that day shifted me in a really important way, a reflection of something that I needed to see. And I'm so grateful that she was honest enough to do that for me. And this is what we can do for each other in loving and kind ways, yes? Melissa B, yes. So I always like to talk about how I came up with my talks. I think it's fun. And sometimes it gives you more information that you might wanna dive into yourself. Any Greg Braden fans? Oh, Greg Braden. He's a scientist turned Metaphysical guru, I guess is the best way to talk about him. And uh, he's studied a lot of ancient thought, philosophies. He's went to Buddhist monasteries. He's traveled the world. And then he's brought back this information and kind of brought it to us through a scientific lens. And I was watching on Gaia TV. And if you don't have Gaia TV, I highly recommend it. A lot of great spiritual food on there. And get it through uh, Prime Video and a few other sources. But he has a show on there called Missing links. And I was watching season three, episode four on perception. And in there, he introduces what are called the three mirrors of reality. And that this wisdom comes to us from the Essenes. So the Essenes were a Jewish ascetic sect that was very devout in their ways and practices. They were, um, every breath, every step, every word was a prayer, was a practice in alignment with their teachings. And many people believe that Jesus wasn't a scene. And the Essenes believe that our reality is a reflection of seven mirrors, but I'm only gonna talk about the first three, which really have to do with relationship. And that this first mirror, mirror number one, reflects us, life is showing us who we are. That's the first mirror. And we've kind of heard about that mirror. Who's heard about that mirror, right? Yeah, 
I mean, the, this became popular, I think, in the 70s and in the 80s. And, you know, we'd complain about something and people would say, well, what's in your consciousness? It's just being reflected, right? But there's more to the story. But it's the first mirror that's reflecting what we believe, what we think, how we feel. Have you ever met somebody that's kind of tight with money and, and is, um, you know, maybe very a stickler for time and they're always complaining that nobody ever pays them back and everybody's late? <laughs> Right? There's a consciousness being reflected there. Or in our society, we use the term or the meme, that's the pot calling the kettle black, right? We recognize that this person is projecting a part of themselves in what they're saying about another person. You know, I belong to the LGBTQ community and uh, we have a saying in the community, thou protesteth too much, which is from Shakespeare, which is basically saying, your critic, your really strong critic might be actually harboring something that they're criticizing and they're, they're afraid of, they're projecting it. Oftentimes, very strong critics of the LGBT community years later come out as gay or lesbian or transgender. So it's a very common syndrome or phenomenon, but it's really showing us that this mirror is reflecting who we are. You know, I had a, an experience with this. Uh, when I was looking at my own mirrors of who I am. And I noticed that people often made assumptions about what I was going to do. All of a sudden, I was on the hook to do something. I don't remember agreeing to it. <laughs> you know? And somehow, that arrangement served them more than it served me. And I got curious about that. I thought, when do I make convenient assumptions? And I realized I do it a lot. I seem to stop a conversation when I think I'm clear in a way it's gonna serve me and I never clarify the commitment or what's gonna land on someone else's plate. And I noticed I had a tendency to do that. Didn't feel good, didn't feel good. But I'm glad that I saw it because now I could do something about it. I can make amendments. And, I, and I, even, um, I even tell some of my friends, hey, if I do this, could you let me know? Because I don't mean to do it, right? So I kind of, I share that with, with my inner circle so I can be better, right? Because I, I don't have any intention to burden somebody. I really don't, right? But it's a tendency and something I wouldn't have seen unless I looked in this mirror to see how am I like this? You know, I love this quote from Vijay Gupta. He says, your perception of me is a reflection of you and my reaction to you is an awareness of me. I just love that. Because it shows the two-way mirror. And to use this mirror, you can ask the question with something that's going on, whether you call it good or bad. Maybe you have a lot of kind people in your life and you don't think you're kind. You might reflect back and go, where is the kindness that is in me? Oh, I am a kind person. Well, gosh, I am a kind person, right? So you can affirm things about yourself that you would consider desirable, but you can also unpack things that keep showing up the patterns and ask yourself, how is what I'm seeing that's showing up a reflection of my thoughts, behaviors, and feelings? How is what's showing up a reflection of my thoughts behaviors and feelings. And when you do this, do this as a kind inquiry. This is not meant to be shaming or blaming or get your spiritual baton out and start beating yourself up with it. That doesn't serve anybody, right? It's not about repentance. It's about awareness and being better than we used to be. Yes, so that's mirror number one. Now we're going to move on to mirror number two. So what I loved about this episode that I was watching with Greg Braden as he unpacked these mirrors is he was sharing a story about his life and how he used these mirrors to get deeper insight to what was going on at a particular time in his life. Three people had shown up in his life kind of at the same time. And when he said, when you see these big shifts, you need to pay attention, right? Because something's up in our toroidal field <laughs> that we just brought in. And at this time, he had brought in a girlfriend, a business manager, and a friend to watch his property when he was away, because he travels a lot. And he was noticing some things were kind of off with his girlfriend and his business partner, but he wasn't really addressing them. He just would go on another tour. 
right? Kind of fleeing the scene. Well, he came back from one of his tours, a very long tour, only to find out his girlfriend had wiped out his bank account and was gone. He had no money. And then he found out from his business manager that the tour didn't make any money. It just broke even. Business manager wasn't doing his job, clearly, right? So not only was his bank account wiped out, the tour he just went on made no money. He invested all that time and energy, no money to live on. And then his friend that he had trusted his property to was growing cannabis, which was illegal. His land could be seized for that. So he's feeling betrayal on three levels. And he got curious about these mirrors and he took a walk down this dirt road. This is the dirt road where he kind of thinks he's written books walking down this road. And he thought, well, we picked up mirror number one and said, well, how am I like this? Am I unethical? Am I unreliable? Um, am I a, a cheat, a thief, right? He said, well, I'm not that. I'm, I, I keep my word. I believe in, in honesty and integrity. I talk about it. I speak, speak about it. I'm not mirror number one. So he turns to mirror number two. And here's mirror number two. Life is showing us what we judge. Life is showing us what we judge. And when he looked into that mirror, he realized he had some very strong judgments about being ethical, about being responsible, about being reliable, about being trustworthy. He was very, very polarized, very attached. So what's in his toroidal field is this judgment about how people should be, right? And, and so it's attracting that reflection of people being unethical, right? It's about energy translation. Energy doesn't speak English. It doesn't know no and not, right? It's just a vibration. So now he gets more people to judge <laughs> as being unethical and, and reinforcing the importance of his attachment to this belief and how important it is. You know, have you ever met somebody who has righteous indignation? You know, they, they're just, they have a very strong belief about something, you know, that, uh, I don't know, you know, that people shouldn't uh, make noise before 8 a.m. on a Saturday and they tell everybody about it. And then they tell everybody how, you know, the neighbor started it at 7.50 the other day and like they just see it and it's everywhere and, right? And you can see almost how they're drawing it into their experience. Has anyone ever experienced that? Yeah. You know, one of my strong judgments is people being on time. Ooh, I have a really strong judgment about that. My last two partnerships, yeah, their watch was broken. Yeah, they were in their own like time zone. They just never... And, and I seem to attract that. So, you know, I've kind of taken a step back and go, hmm, how much do I want to be invested in that? How can I be softer around that? How can I have less edges and intensity and just relax into it? What kind of gifts of someone being late? What can I do? I can meditate. Like, like I'm just spinning it into something softer and not so heavy in my experience. Does that make sense? Yes. So here's what we can ask. If we're not in mirror number one, we can say to ourselves, is what I'm seeing in the other a reflection of what I judge in myself or others? Is what I'm seeing a reflection of what I judge in myself or others? And if you stumble upon a judgment, you can start to see how you can be softer about it how you can maybe not be so attached and work with it in your consciousness. So now we're down to mirror number three. Oh, I love this mirror. And it's different than the other two mirrors. This mirror is that life is showing us what we've lost, what's been taken away, or what we've given away. Life is showing us what we've lost, what's been taken away, or what we've given away. Have you ever met somebody, you barely know them, but you're like this, 
Like you just have this magnetic pull, like you've known them forever. Like there's just this instant connection. You might be in mirror number three. They might have something in their field. Maybe they're really confident and outgoing and you want to be more confident and outgoing. And it's in there and it's not even conscious, but it's in their field. And all of a sudden you're like, match game, right? We pull in things to us to help heal us, to help fill that void or that chasm in our energy field, right? That's why opposites attract. Have you ever met a couple and one person is the talker and the other one is the quiet one? Ever meet that couple, the talker and the quiet one? Yeah. And the talker will talk for the quiet one, right? And somewhere along the line, the quiet one lost their voice. Something in their experience stole their power to speak. Maybe it wasn't safe. Maybe they grew up children are to be seen, not heard. Something. And so they brought into their, now their match game was someone who speaks. But here's what happens in that dynamic. is once the one who lost the voice starts to get their voice back, the relationship starts to get unbalanced. People kind of feel lost. Now the talker's not quite sure how to be. And then the talker's crossing boundaries when the healed person now wants to speak for themselves. Anybody ever experienced that? Where one's getting healed in the relationship and now it's kind of, it doesn't know how to find its equilibrium, right? So sometimes that can happen. Initially, we're attracted for this reason in this third mirror and then things change. You know, I had this experience shortly after I lost my mother, left a big hole in my life. We were very close. She really saw me. She really believed in me. And up until that point in my life, I didn't have spiritual community. So I decided I need to go find spiritual community. I need to find heart-centered people. And so when I went into the Center for Spiritual Awareness in Sacramento and I met the minister, it was one of those instant connections. And she saw me and she believed in me and she loved me. She was helping fill that hole. That's what the instant connection was. Now, I, over time, I've begun to heal myself. I've been able to affirm myself, right? That hole's been, been and our relationship has been changing over time, right? As, as that happens. But that might be what's going on. You can ask yourself, right? is what I'm seeing a reflection of something that has been lost, taken away, or that I've given away. With an honest and kind inquiry, this is not about self-judgment, just self-awareness. This is strong medicine, these three mirrors. Work with them with a sense of kindness and compassion towards yourself and others. Working with these three mirrors, like strong medicine, has side effects, right? You may discover something that you need to make amends for. You may discover something that may trigger a sense of shame, and you may have to work with a practitioner or a minister to get over that, to get through that, right? And once you know something, you can't go back. Once you know, you know. And your consciousness is expanded, which is a good thing but it can also be a heavy and difficult thing. So be kind, be compassionate, be loving with yourself and others as you work with these mirrors. You know, I love Stephen Covey and he says this, and I think he's a mystic as well. We see the world not as it is, but as we are, or as we've been conditioned to see it. When we open our mouths to describe what we see, we, in effect, describe ourselves, our perceptions, our paradigms. Let's take this message into prayer. Mm, knowing as we drop into our inner being, where that upper room of the divine exists in each and every one of us, that place of the most high love, the most high wisdom, and the most high power, that's always going out before us and preparing the way. 
And I know each and every person has come here by divine appointment. And what needed to be said was said and what needed to be heard was heard for an upliftment, for an expansion, for a greater liberation of our walk in this human life as spiritual beings. And so I simply give thanks. I give thanks for CSL Sacramento, this divine spiritual community that is keeping the light on, the messages flowing, and the hearts connected. This work of the divine shining through each and every person present here today. I know that you continue to expand in your light, in your love, in your liberation, and in your joy. And I simply release this word, the word of the divine being I am, into the divine, into the one of us, knowing it is already done. And together we say, and so it is. alive in the space between us feel that love right now God speaks out in the words between us hear those words right now I am whole
That was powerful. We are holy. And we are the Sacramental Centers for Spiritual Living. And we are right here offering you three great opportunities um, to donate to our wonderful center and enjoy people like our, our ministers, practitioners, and our guest speakers, Mitch. Thank you so much. And the way to um, send your offering is through uh, our website shown on your screen, <clears throat> through PayPal or credit card, or you can mail personal checks to our address shown on your screen as well. And don't forget Amazon Smile and sign up as, our, as your favorite charity for our center. And we get, a, we get some uh, uh, a little percentage back and we appreciate it. We appreciate you. Thank you. And now, here, if you remain muted and say with me, our abundance affirmation. Abiding by the law of circulation and in heartfelt gratitude, I affirm that I live in a creative and abundant universe that continuously flows in, through, and out as me, expressing as the ever-expanding infinite good, and so it is. And now, here's our special uh, practitioner, Debbie Putman, with our latest activities. Debbie? Good morning. That This has been an amazing service. I am so grateful. We have a few activities going on this summer and mostly they are centered around the opportunity to actually get together in person. You know that we have some ongoing classes. It's a little late to join those. We'll have more in the future, but right now in person, you can go to Reverend Patricia's house where we can join for crafts, conversation and connection. Bring your rocks to paint, bring your baby blanket to make, bring your whatever it is that you're working on and enjoy time sitting outside on Reverend Patricia's porch. And again, we are opening for what Ruth has already described as our soft opening on Sunday, August 1st at 10 a.m. Please reach out to Ruth Hall. Ruth, if you could post your phone number again in the chat, that would be great. Please text Ruth to let her know if you're available on, I think it's this coming Friday, July 2nd, to help move some items into our center on Main Street so that we can have our opening on August 1st. As you know, we accept prayer requests both today and all week long. There is a place to actually put them on our website, a button to push, just like the donate button, there's a prayer button. So you can go to our website, put in your prayer and our ecclesiastical team will pray on that all week. You can also put something in the chat directed individually to one of us and we'll share it with the, the whole team or just to everyone, whatever you're more comfortable with. And join with me in our affirmation. This is our gift to you to take into the week. And again, Ruth, if you are able to type this in or someone able to put it in the chat, that would be wonderful. I open to the reflections of my life to see more deeply into who I am, what I believe, and the divine assignments that are calling me. Oh, wow. As we breathe into this, um, this day, this, this special time together that um, was such a perfect reflection of who we are in gathering. And I know that each one of us heard exactly what we needed to hear. And we'll take this, this time of reflection, this time of oneness and, and what is being reflected back to us through each and every person that we see. For life is an unfolding of relationships. And I am so grateful for this learning uh, and so grateful 
and thankful for this day and the message from Mitch that um, really hit home and was a great reminder for some things uh, that I personally had forgotten and some things that were new to me. So thank you. Um, and now please stay for our gathering. Oh, closing song first. <laughs> Now for our fellowship. 